All right, guys, today we are in the infamous Casa. It's been around for 11 years. It's a huge tradition here in Colombia to come to this restaurant. It's uh, It started off Mediterranean, a little Spanish flair, and now they've kind of turned it into their own little spin, but it's very, very traditional. You feel like you're at home. This place is one of my families and friends favorites. So I'm really excited to come here to be with the chef, uh, Eduardo and the team, and let's go check it out. All right, guys, so I'm actually holding up the, the mic because I got two guys here and I wanted to actually um, talk to both of them because they got such an amazing story um, here at Casa. Um, we we're here with the executive corporate chef of the group, uh, which is Eduardo, and we got here uh, Juan, which is the executive chef here of Casa. Eduardo's been with the group for 17 years which is insane. Um, he's been with, uh, uh, he's opened up. ¿Cuántos restaurantes ha ayudado a abrir? Todos, básicamente. Uh, almost all of them. Like, yeah. ¿Cuántos son? Eh? Ahorita eh, son casi 28 restaurantes. Gran parte de los restaurantes que se han eh, abierto fuera de esta zona son en influencia de lo que ya tenemos. Entonces, okay. de aquí ha partido la expansión de, de DLK. Yes, so it's one, of, it's one of the biggest groups here in, in, in Colombia. Uh, it's called DLK. Um, they got 28 restaurants. Um, they also have uh, delivery service, um, ghost kitchens, uh, uh, absolutely phenomenal. All the restaurants are amazing. The, the food comes from the heart here. Tell me, dime un poco más de ti. Yo comencé de panadero. Eh, trabajé nueve años de panadero. Okay. Luego ingresé a una cocina italiana. Como sabía mucho de panadería, pues comencé a hacer pizzas. Entonces de ahí comencé de una vez trabajando en cocina fría, luego pasé a caliente okay. y terminé en ese restaurante de, de jefe de cocina. De LK inicié seis meses en Diluca, luego pasé a Nico Café. So the guy jumps into casa um, as also as a, as, a, as a prep cook, then becomes a, a, a line cook, and then from there two years later becomes the executive chef of this, of this beautiful project. How the whole evol evolution of the restaurant it's been over the last 11 years um, from the beginning to like what it is now. Definitivamente eh, el restaurante Casa tiene un menú super super amplio, una variedad super excelente. Tenemos gustos para para todo el mundo, el abuelo, el papá, la mamá, el hijo, el nieto, para todos. Por eso su nombre como tal lo dice Casa es una familia para que la gente se sienta en familia, ideal para toda clase de eventos. Y para, abajo en el logo dice para compartir. Para compartir. Entonces, eso siempre ha sido así. Siempre ha sido así. So what he's telling me is um, absolutely amazing. So 11 years ago, this the restaurant Casa it started off to sharing uh, a lot of sharing plates. Um, but at that time, people here, the culture did not like sharing. Everything was a protocol. Um, first the on, first up the appetizer, first the hot appetizers, then the cold appetizer. And then here they just kind of broke that barrier and just have like, everybody was like starting to get used to it. He said it was very, very difficult at the beginning for everybody to share. But then after they started getting used to it, they, they kind of enjoyed it and they loved it. Um, and, and here in Katz, I was asking him how it's, how the evolution from 11 years ago to now has has gone and it's just kind of they've kind of been adapting because this is a place for the grandfather for the great-grandfather for the father for the son for pretty much uh, the whole different just generations casa was built in 1952 um it's a house that it started off as a house uh, but it was built by uh, a, a a very famous uh, family the bermudas family here in in um in bogota um architects so you could see kind of like some of the structure some of the architectural structures were very very different uh, back in the day in that time it was very very special um and um it was it was it started off as a, a kind of their house and then they Delegat took it over 11 years ago and then they almost used it as an art gallery as well so they had art kind of all over uh, the house and they would just kind of people would come in sit eat and say hey can I buy that art and then it just kind of went rotating with the art so it just became this uh, and you come in and as soon as we walked in there's different parts of the house it's a very historical you can't do any uh, construction to it it's a historical house so you have different rooms and the house is exactly as if it was a house and it's beautifully it's kind of it's kind of wrongfully, I see it distributed, but it's beautifully distributed. So you kind of see it 
like it doesn't make sense but how they made it into the restaurant it makes complete sense and you have so many different areas of the house of the restaurant which is amazing and what these guys are doing with the food I can't wait to try it I'm so excited um, uh, the food looks amazing this place is packed for a reason every single day um, waiting list so make sure you guys get your reservations here at Casa in Bogota Before going to sit down to eat, I'm here with Laura, rockstar Laura, who does all the cocktails, todo lo del bar, and she made me this amazing cocktail. She's like, wait, wait, you have to try it. So, okay, so let's try it. So, esto que es? Bueno, este es un cocktail, es de autor. Es, sale bastante acá en casa. Es un cocktail de ginebra con mango biche. And she turned it into a popsicle, right? Una, una paleta. paleta. Okay, and then it's based gin, ginebra. Ginebra, más? gotas de angostura, okay, some angostura bitters, and fever tree aromatic. So, y la sal es la sal de chiles. Okay, let's try it. ¿Picante o no? Un poquito picante. Oh, man. Okay, that's refreshing. Okay, entonces... La idea es que cojas mm. la paleta, la untas de la sal y te la vas comiendo un solo. Oh, okay, so the sal... Oh, man. Mmm. Oh, man. ¿Qué tal? Buenísimo. ¿Qué tal? Buenísimo. Chef Eduardo and Chef Juan, which is, uh, um, Eduardo's executive chef of corporate and um, Juan is an executive chef here. So they put out this, uh, this amazing food. So I don't even know where to start. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dig into this. So this is something like pretty, kind of like Peruvian. So the style is Mediterranean slash uh, Spanish. It started with that kind of influence and then it kind of went developing over time. They have over 60 different dishes. Um, I've come here a lot and usually my friends, this is one of my favorite my friends' uh, favorite spots. So they always order all kinds of different type of all, all different foods. And, and you know, it's kind of like I was talking to Eduardo. He's like, I was like, what kind of food is this? Because it, there's such a, a huge variety. He's like, no, this is the world, baby. The world, the, the, the world in one house. So they did like a little ceviche. So they did like a little onions um, uh, that looks like basil, peppers. Um, I saw like a little lime juice, maybe vinegar. And then this is a, a huancaina sauce. And then I think they did a little juice. So the juice kind of soaks up the bread. I feel the bread like a little soaky. So the bread is ridiculous. And I think the citrus and the, or, or kind of the little oil of that ceviche kind of just sucks in. <laughs> What's amazing about this dish, this restaurant was opened about 11 years ago and this has not changed from day one. They serve it with like these little chips. Um, I think it's potato or it could be yuca. Man, this is amazing. The tuna looks ridiculously, amazingly fresh. Um, it's got some avocados. I think this is kind of like a soy sauce, ponzu type. Um, and then this has like little chips on top, onions. And then you have a little sweetness from the soy sauce. It's gonna kind of dig in there. I don't know if we break it apart. So the tuna, amazingly fresh. Oh wow, that tuna is amazing. So the tuna seems like it's marinated in a little ginger. Man, the tuna is like butter. Again, this place is always packed. Uh, what I love about it is you have all the different generations. You have um, from old, young, and everybody just kind of mixes together. It really, really feels like you're in a, a, one of your family members' um, a house. Just very simple, but the tuna is phenomenal. All right, so this is one of their new dishes. I mean, you can kind of tell it looks, looks amazing. It's like bite size. And um, uh, the chef was telling me that's actually one of their most popular dishes, which to me sounds amazing. So you have a little, like a little tuna tartare. You have some shrimp. It has a little um, crispy coconut on top. And then here you have haiba, which is a, a local um, a crab. You have the crispiness and the sweetness of the sushi rice, which is amazing. Then on top you had um, this I felt citrus, I felt a little, I, I think you gotta get the spiciness, there's a little sauce underneath. Wow, what a perfect dish. Um, I felt a little wasabi as well. Very, very good. I don't even know where to start. This food looks amazing. The smells that you get, again, now I feel the restaurant first started Mediterranean with um, uh, Mediterranean with uh, Spanish influences. So, I mean, you can just tell that everything has so much flavor. Um, the food, it, 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 it just looks amazing. Like, it looks very homey. I think it's just like the name, Casa, which is home in Spanish. We have the little paella. I'll tell you guys right now, but this one came in a cast iron, so cast iron is very hot. I'm gonna kind of dig in. He says, so the rice is almost like, it's almost like a risotto type. Look how beautiful that is. It's almost like a risotto type um, 
I smell vegetables, I smell herbs. And he says he did it with a little beef stock and beef and vegetable stock. So he caramelizes it almost like with a, sh a sweet sugar. So he says it looks a little burnt, but when you taste it, it's not burnt at all. And it's not burnt at all. It's um, it's very crispy. It's It's got a little bit of the sweetness of the sugar. And, and the duck is perfectly cooked, like perfectly cooked. It comes in this beautiful little paella pan. So they actually cook it in the paella pan and then they put it in the oven. So it's like a paella, um, almost a paella is like a, like a very wet risotto with spaghetti. So you get spaghetti and then they bake it. So you have the smoothness of the bottom of the spaghetti and then you have the crunchiness of the spaghetti on top, which I think is genius because you have that texture, that change in texture in one dish. So let's try the fish, man. So you use some, some fish stock, which tastes amazing. So I, I can probably imagine that he probably just cooked it like cooking pasta, but with, with fish stock, with all these uh, seafood elements, so this is called rabo de toro, which is called, it's oxtail. So oxtail is a, is, a, is a beef that you usually cook it, stew it for a very long time. They make this rice, which is also like a risotto type. They add the stock and the fat from the, from the oxtail into, into this rice to make it. I taste the, the iberico ham, the little saltiness of the iberico ham just goes perfect with the rice. Look how beautiful, look how beautiful that is. Just, that just comes right apart. Oh my lord. We have a tradition at home. We actually, the bone is so good like to kind of suck on like because it has some of the cartilage, some of the fat still on there and just like sucking the bone. I don't know. Uh, we grew up we grew up eating this and, and for us it was a treat. It wasn't something you always found but you could find it and my dad would love, love cooking this and we would love eating it. The explosion of flavors that I have right now in my mouth from each individual dish, including the entrees, is, is unbelievable. I had to try it in front of the chef. She looks so excited, she looks so happy. Um, I had to try it in front of her. And, and like, I really wanna take a big bite into this and, and explain to you how freaking um, ridiculous this is. So the bread is, is soaked in that milk for a long time because it's very soggy, but yet the bread holds the composure of, uh, of, of the, and texture, which, which I think is what makes it phenomenal and it's warm. So, and then what she does on top of that is they throw a little sugar on top and then they torch it so the sugar turns like into a creme brulee and then they have a caramel on the outside, which is warm. So you just can't go wrong with that. Like, it's not a lot of ingredients. It's just very little ingredients, but the perfect ingredients that just balance all these dishes out, which that to me is, is phenomenal. So this is a meringue. They have a little um, lime, a little lime zest, which makes, which cuts down the fat. We also put lime zest in our tres leches. In Spanish, it's called tres leches, it's three milks, because it usually has milk, um, heavy cream, and condensed milk, and that's why it's three milk. And sometimes they have four milks when they put like a dulce de leche on top. So that's the reason why, why they call it uh, tres leches, or three milks. So the meringue, again, is egg whites, sugar. Um, uh, they, they do something really cool, really neat to this. Uh, she said um, arandano dirt, which is um, like blueberry dirt. So they dehydrate the blueberries. Um, they um, they dehydrate the blueberries, and then they uh, crumble it with Milo, which is like a, our quick, our chocolate quick. Um, and they crumble it, mix it together, and they kind of throw it over. So you have a little bit of that chocolate uh, flavor in the in the background, and a little bit of that um, uh, sourness from the blueberry. Oh, amazing! The people here, from the kitchen, from the people, from the management, from like what a great team um, uh, that has put together this uh, this restaurant. And for them to have lasted this many years into, and years to come um, is amazing how, how they keep up with what's going on and it just feels homey. Like I, I really feel like I'm at home. I really feel like my parents cooked, like I'm here with my parents even though they're not here. Um, and it's it's awesome. This this has been such a treat, guys. Um, thank you to everybody who invited me. Thank you for everybody um, that was that made this possible. Um, really appreciate it, guys. Casa, you guys gotta come. It's here in Bogota, in the Sonate. Till next time, guys.